2021 has been a big year. Some big challenges, some big answered prayers, just a lot to reflect on. While the Emily Awards are always jam-packed with makeup talk, I thought this year I'd open them up the way I start each day, with my gratitude journal, sharing three things that I appreciate. Feel free to share yours in the comments section. journal today. Um, here's what I have for today, my three things. Number one, just a warm home. You know, having working heat in the house. I can hear the wind whipping around outside and I'm just like, you know, it feels so good to be in a warm, comfortable home. And especially in the evenings, you're sitting on the couch, you got Christmas lights on, everything's warm and cozy. I'm thankful for that. I'm also thankful for um, yesterday I got to watch Biddy in her pre-K um, Christmas program and <laughs> that, is, that is so sweet. The teachers have it down. It's like, it's four songs. It's short. It's in and out. It's really just the way it should be for that age group. But I was just thankful because this is her first time like getting up in front of a decent sized group of people and doing something. And I was just proud of her for that. I could tell she was a little nervous at the start. She was kind of turning to the little boy next to her. I could just tell as her mom that she was like pushing through something. And then she got into the song and it was like, you know, it's going to be okay. And I just, I, I was proud of that moment. I, that's what I saw happening. Something I'm also thankful for is my hip. Um, um, my left hip, some of you may or may not know this, I know I've talked about it at times in videos, but not frequently. Um, I have hip dysplasia in my left hip. It's not sitting precisely where it's supposed to. And that can affect my ability to like walk long distances. When I was a kid and this was found, something I was always told not to do was run long distances. So I'm not one who gets out and just runs all over town, but I do walk a lot. I do think that, you know, getting my steps every day, minimum 10,000 steps and going on walks with the kids and stuff, um, in recent years, the last couple of years, I feel like I've felt less pain in my hip area because I think I've just gotten it like back into shape. I remember like after having Bubba and after having each of the kids, you know, you're you're sitting in a chair so much, you're nursing a baby so much, Bubba particularly. Like that kid was just nursing constantly. I was sitting all the time. And while with something like this, you think, well, maybe you should be more sedentary with that. Like not really. What I've learned is why you shouldn't do the repeated impact impact of like running, you can walk and walking actually, I think, keeps some mobility going there, keeps the joint kind of loose, if you know what I mean, and being loosened up is what feels good. So I'm just thankful I've sort of realized that over the last couple of years and going on walks and getting my steps every day, I think is beneficial for my hip. So I'm glad that it's something that I've been able to work with. I'm guessing at some point in my life, I'll be getting a hip replacement, but for now, I feel like I've got something I can work with here. So I'm grateful for that. Now, we are going to move into our Emily Awards finale. We've made it to the finale part four. So if you're just randomly finding this video, what you need to know is that there are already three parts of the Emily Awards. The face, so we're talking, you know, the foundations and primers and concealers and powders and all that stuff. We did the eyes. We also did lips. And so now in the finale, um, I kind of have some random categories that I like to go through. If you've seen this before, you know we do MVPs, most valuable products from each of the previous videos. I address some favorite brushes, tools, um, dual purpose items. You know, it's not a huge video, but just kind of a fun like cap off to the whole Emily Awards thing that we do here. So number one category here is best brushes. And I'm just gonna consider application products in that category because I feel like I've enjoyed so much my beauty blender over the past year. It's a little dirty now, but I did get this thing real clean. And I will say a little cleaning tip, get your whatever wash you use on your sponges, get it on there and just let it sit for like maybe five minutes and then rinse it out. And then you really get it clean. Give it a little soak. But I do love my beauty blender. I feel like there are so many foundations where this is my preferred way to put them on. Also concealers, your fuller coverage concealers. I love getting in there and popping it on with the beauty blender. So you dampen it totally. And then that's what you use as your blending method for foundation. So I've really 
come into loving that. And the Beauty Blender specifically, because it's got a little different texture than other sponges, it feels like it's a little more porous. The Real Technique sponge is so super duper soft, and I like that, but this one maybe doesn't get quite as soft. It just has a little more, I don't want to say friction, but maybe a little more resistance on the skin. It's just not a floppy sponge, and I like the way it blends, okay? It's something special, and I love it. Um, and then the other tool that I would say has been a real must-have whenever I'm using a cream product, so cream blush, cream bronzer, or liquids, liquid highlight, liquid blush. You see me using a lot my Sephora Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush, and this was something that I got. It's like a Sephora perk or something. Um, the size of it, you can see it's like a dense synthetic brush, but it turns out to be perfect for blending in those kinds of steps, whether it's a contour, a blush, um, a highlight even. It's just the perfect multitasking size, and I pull this out a lot, but I actually have the full size of that too. Now I want you to see something. My mini, the brush head, is the same size as the full size brush. The full size brush that you can order anytime is called the Pro Foundation 56. So yes, it's good for foundation, it's good for concealer, but it's also good for any of those other cream steps that I mentioned, and it's the exact same brush as what you see here, just different lengths of handles. So for its multitasking ability, its softness, um, it's the density, that's a big thing. When you're trying to blend out those creams, you don't want anything streaky. You want a really dense brush to help you blend that in if you're not using like a sponge or something like that. So I really love this type of brush. This would be the orderable one um, that you can get now. If you love cream products, I think you would love using that. Okay, next category is my must-have tool. Talk about something where, I think I mentioned it in a video, and the topic of the video is like stuff I never talk about, <laughs> um, because I just, I use it, but you don't see me using it, and it's called the Sigma Switch. Um, so yeah, Sigma Brushes makes one of these. I've got a totally clean side here, but this is what I've been using. I did wash this recently, and sometimes it's, it's hard to get it, like some of the shimmer that's like deep down in there it's hard to get that out but basically what you use this for is after you use a brush and you just want to clean off the color a little bit and move on to another color this little silicone mat just absolutely grabs that powder off of your brush and you basically have a clean brush to go into your next step with so that's really really handy like if I'm using my flat brush here. If I just use this with something dark and then I want to move to something light, I can rub it on here. This had some shimmer on it, so it really like clings on there. And then I have basically an instantly clean brush to use. And they give different textures. I can use any brush anywhere. I never pay attention to where exactly I'm rubbing it off on. Except I would say for eye brushes, use one of these more densely packed areas. I have it laying out right here, you know, on my table where I can use it as I do my makeup. Up and I just, I really love it for eye brushes. That's the main way I use it. That's dual purpose items. So something that serves more than one function in the makeup routine. Um, I'm gonna name the Believe Beauty Primer. This was uh, the award-winning primer for the drugstore category in my face awards, and it's called Radiantly Primed Face Primer. And this can give you that beautiful glow that like Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter gives you, um, say, as a primer. You can use it as a mixer, or as I described, you can use Use it to kind of top off and that's what I'm going to show you right now in this video. I'm going to apply a little bit right up in here and I'm going to grab for that brush that I mentioned and look at this pretty like pearly hard to put your finger on glow that you end up getting on top of the skin when you add some of that. Like it doesn't look like a big streak of shimmer, but the whole look of my skin, me looking up close at it, it doesn't look makeup-y. So that's a really neat product. Sometimes we don't think about using a primer on top of our makeup, but this one, given the glow that's in there, it really lends itself to that, and I think it's beautiful. I have an MVP for hair, and it is my new dry bar curling iron, you guys. I love this thing. Um, this is the one inch. I went for a smaller barrel size because I feel like my hair like if I can get it into a tighter curl it has a better chance of staying um, but I can still like brush it out and it doesn't look like a really tight ringlet or something but I have very fine very straight hair and it just responds well to this you have the digital um, control over your heat down here but what's also special look at this the clip like 
rotates. So as you're putting your hair around it and you're kind of like trying to make sure just your end gets under there, that rotating clip benefits you a ton. Like it creates a lot of ease. It's a really high quality curling iron and it locks in my curl. It locks it in better than any other curling iron I've ever owned. And really that staying power is what's important to me. Like I mentioned with my T3 hot rollers, I love those things too. They lock in my curl better than my cheaper hot roller set. For my hair type, this is a splurge worthy thing for me too because if I want to get that curl going, I've kind of learned that I need to step it up a little bit with the curling iron. So I love this one. This would be a great gift for somebody who's, you know, wanting a brand new curling iron. The one thing is this is like rubbery too. Oh, that's a great thing actually because when I sit it down on my, on my countertop, I love how it doesn't roll or anything because this is like has sort of a silicone feel right on this segment, but it will sometimes like grab a hair or two. You know, just the texture is going to do that more than something completely slick, but I love the curling iron. I've really enjoyed it and I've used it on the girls too and it's just very easy for me to use on them. My MVP for body, I'm naming the Bomb Dia Bright Mist from Sol de Janeiro. Do you guys remember me raving on this stuff? Like I feel like it was earlier in the summer. This is the scent that I want to like be known to have. <laughs> this is the scent I just want to be enveloped with daily. It's so good. Um, it says Brazilian Crush, Cherry Rosa, Black Amber Plum, and Vanilla Woods. I guess that's the description of it. But why I'm holding this, I have the smaller size. And remember I was saying like, we need a bigger size of this. And lo and behold, they do sell an eight fluid ounce size. And that's what I have now because we're about out of the first one we bought. I say we because the girls want this sprayed on them, particularly Belle before she goes to school. We joke that it's her signature scent as well. Um, but now I have this big daddy waiting in the wings when we run out of the other because it's just, it's, it's the best smell, you guys. It may be... Does it give you a little tropical vibe? Maybe, but there's something yummy about it too. Like what can you take from black amber plum and vanilla woods? It's hard to make you know what this smells like, but I recommend it. If you're questionable about it, there is, like I said, um, the smaller size that you can get that's like half of this, but now we got the biggie. Okay, MVPs for skincare. Here's another thing that, you know, sometimes maybe just on occasion gets mentioned, but I go through this stuff, this miracle water from It Cosmetics. I love this micellar water. This is the first thing I put on my face when I get up to the makeup room in the morning. It says three-in-one tonic, skin brightening, radiance booster, anti-aging, and skin softening micellar cleanser. So I just put some on a cotton round and I run it all over my face. I do not wash my face first, but this is like my morning face wash, I guess. It, it kind of cleanses me of whatever was on my face from the night before, skincare wise, and then I'm ready to go for all the skincare and makeup that I put on in the morning. This has just really jived well with my skin. I've had overall, with the exception of those couple breakouts I had when I tried to switch things up, <laughs> to use a new night cream and I had like zit, zit. But most of the time, my skin has been awesome this past year and this is one constant that is just a daily thing that I always use. And then my other, my co-winner for best skincare, Guys, I got a triple empty to show you here. I'm so proud. Um, the Glossier Serums. Do you remember back when I did my Glossier video and I said I was going to try these? Well, y'all, I used them religiously every single day. I am out of all three. Yes, you layer them. So first off, I use Super Pure. That's the niacinamide and zinc. Um, and then I layer on my uh, Super Bounce. That's the hyaluronic acid and vitamin B5. And then I put on the Super Glow, which is the vitamin C and magnesium. Okay, so triple serum thing happening. After I use that micellar water. I use those and I follow it up with a rich face cream like Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base in the morning. But I've gone through them all. I've used them to the point of where the dropper wouldn't get anything anymore. So I would just tip it out and try to get it out of the spout. I've gotten everything out that I can and I have, yes, repurchased a replacement of all of these. So I'm going to stay with that regimen. I think it's making a difference for my skin. I'm happy with just the texture and look of my skin, even with no makeup on really. And I credit these things. I've used them very consistently and I think I've reaped the benefits of that. I need a drink of coffee. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas is coming. Are you ready for the MVPs? MVP face. So this is where I kind of look over all the Emily Award winners for face and I think you know, what stood out the most to me. And have there been some coverage products that I absolutely wouldn't want to be without that I mentioned in that video? Yeah. But what like has on a 
ongoing basis brought me so much joy with every application. And it's blush, you guys. I mean, it's it's blush. It's clearly blush. If you watch any of my videos, you know, like, the blush comes on, the lights go on, everything's like sunshine and butterflies when the blush goes on. And so the e.l.f. Bite Size Duos, guys, this year, um, you know, I've moved through different favorites. Today I'm wearing a Bite Size Duo. I actually chose my Spiced Apple one. So that's that really pretty neutrally blush. You're seeing it right in here. And then that highlight, which has now been topped with this, but I had this on at the start. And th this is also a great eyeshadow duo, by the way. So I love that one. Watermelon, that one has an outstanding bright highlight in it. Um, and then pomegranate, the rosy cheeks. Like, I just, I, I feel so strongly about these. They're such a great, like, little $3 value, but they're so, so good. And spiced apple, watermelon, pomegranate. Those are the big three for me right now until I come into another favorite. But yeah, MVP face, I'm naming a blush this year. Um, MVP for eyes. I think a lot of you could probably predict what this is because every time it makes a little appearance in a video, which is frequently, I'm talking about how brilliant this product is. And it's the Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt, a product that can effectively fill in the brows as well as uh, provide hold and just set the brows in place. It's all about that brush, you guys. Shorter bristles at the bottom, longer bristles at the top. Shorter bristles carry more product, longer bristles carry less. And you have that great, oh, brain alert, you have that great dual purpose in one brush to get the job done. And if you're just simply interested in hold, this holds so well, so, so well, okay? So I love it. I used it today. I filled in my brows with a pencil and then I used this just to fluff them up and I love it. I just, I can't say enough about it. Simply because of the brush and the formula that holds really well, it is head and shoulders now above other tinted brow gel products like this. It's a really great thing. I hope they don't discontinue this anytime soon. My MVP for lips, baby. If we're talking, you know, what got real frequent use, what was super effective, what really stands out to me, the Revlon Color Stay Lip Liners are tremendous. And a little tip, before you use them, get an EOS lip balm. And EOS has not really been prominent on the scene for years, I know that. They've never been known to be a real like drench your lips with moisture type of balm. Yeah, they provide a little moisture, but they're very ungreasy. And for a lot of people who put on a lip balm, they may want more than this. But this is actually perfection when it comes to just getting enough moisture to prime the lips for a lip liner, okay? It's just enough. And this is like the, the honey apple, I, you find that at Target. Um, but you get that on and then you go on with your lip liner. I'm wearing the shade mauve. I don't know if mauve got a mention. It didn't get a mention in the lips video, but this is another shade I really like. That's all that's on there. Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in mauve. I also love raisin. I also couldn't be without chocolate. Um, any other shades I should try, let me know. These wear so well. They're so simple. You get your nice defined line. Added perfection to the look. They're the reason why I have pulled in lip liners so much more this year than ever before. And a co-winner, an honorable mention here because of their very frequent use the matte ink crayons. Um, I love all the shades I have. I actually have now in this little container, this is where I keep lip liners and my matte ink crayons, okay? So I want them handy. I like them in a handy place because so often those products are the accent to an existing look. If I put on a lipstick and I'm not 100% in love with the color, I grab one of these lip liners or I grab one of those matte ink crayons and I start adjusting, you know? Um, the matte ink crayons, as I've said, you put them on, they will set they will lock in place. They're easy to put on, easier than the liquid lipstick kind of applicator, but you get liquid lipstick type of effects from those. And the best color selection, the most complete color selection, check Ulta's website. Everything's linked below, my friends. Everything's listed, linked below, plus an additional video that will take you to more info, a past review, a past tutorial, showing this stuff in action. So I know that's sometimes what you wanna see, and so I'm trying to provide that. I'm adding one extra category to the end of the Emily Awards, and it's top look of the year. So the favorite look that I've done, um, favorite thing, in 
in a tutorial where I was just like wowed with how it turned out. And I'm going to say my 90s supermodel glam. That was my favorite look I've done in a long time. Um, I thought it turned out great. I used so many affordable products in that look. I was just absolutely thrilled with the way it turned out. I love the hair. I love the whole vibe. I mean, we had like matte skin. We were trying to channel like Cindy Crawford in that video and it, I, I really feel like it worked. Other favorite videos that I did this year was where I featured other people's top five, um, which I really want to get back into that this year. But like I did my friend David's top five, I did pups, I did moms. They spit out five of their favorite products and I work them into a look and try them and tell you about them. And that was just really fun. But guys, Thank you so much. Thank you for making the Emily Awards something so fun and exciting every year. I know there are some people who tell me when the first video comes out that they're saving the entire series to watch it in its entirety. And I just, God bless you guys. Thank you for however you like to watch it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking everything in the past year. Thank you for your likes, your comments, your shares. Guys, the sharing is such a key to helping the channel grow and letting other people know about it. So thank you for doing that. And I just hope you have a wonderful Christmas. If you like the Emily Awards, keep watching the videos all throughout the year because I'm constantly reviewing products. I'm constantly looking at things with the same kind of lens. So I really hope you'll stick with me. I am so grateful for you and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.